Hi, and thank you for tuning into another episode of Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine. I'm your host, Angelina Caviello. On today's episode, I'll be speaking with HGTV's beloved tomboy, Christy Lee, who's making a courageous comeback to television after an emotional battle with Graves' disease and thyroid eye disease. The star will be shedding light on the impact it has had causing disfigurement, physical, and emotional pain that she admits she is still working through. So stay tuned for this cheerful interview with Christy Lee. So again, welcome. Thank you for coming on Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine to speak with us. We're looking forward to having you again on our summer cover for 2024. And, you know, you've had this wonderful career, a dream career, really, on HGTV. Who doesn't, I mean, amazing everything is great up until now. It's been an amazing ride. And then last year, 2023, you get a diagnosis that stops you dead in your tracks. Tell us Uh, about the day that you were diagnosed with Graves' disease and the symptoms you suffered from thyroid eye disease. uh, I mean, it literally feels like yesterday. It's actually hard to hard to look back on that now and think that it's been over a year. Um, Basically, I woke up one morning and I thought I had the worst migraine ever, maybe even like a sinus infection that was developing. And, uh, you know, I had the pain, I had the pressure pain, I had a little bit of eye swelling. Um, So I just figured, you know, maybe I was on for like a one or two day ride with a migraine. um, and, And that's about all. But it was only six days later that I ended up in the emergency room. Um, so over the course of the next week, my symptoms just got worse and my eye swelling got more intense, uh, more painful. Uh, it was making it difficult to uh, move my eyes to see. Um, at the same time, I wasn't feeling well and I didn't really know why. Um, and then Was that when- scary for you? I mean, were you thinking other things, neurological? Like, I'm sure you were thinking something different than what your diagnosis was. At that point... Um, the day I actually went to the emergency room, I had a full blown anxiety panic attack, just complete meltdown. Um, literally just completely freaked out, had no idea what was going on. Um, turns out that the Graves disease, uh, causing hyperthyroidism and causing, you know, raging hormones throughout your body and an improper hormone imbalance, um, was a big contributing factor to that actual meltdown. Of course, at the time, I, I had no idea. I was just terrified. So I went to the emergency room. Um, I spoke to uh, I spoke to a couple doctors. I spoke to a physician's assistant. They ran every test, like every test you could possibly imagine. I mean, they were thinking maybe even like an orbital fracture, um, maybe some type of concussion, everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the physician's assistant came back and was like, okay, we did your blood work. Your thyroid levels are, are really off. And it looks like based on those numbers, you have uh, Graves' disease. And because of your eye symptoms, we'd say that you also have thyroid eye disease. And I remember looking at that doctor in the emergency room because you often don't receive a diagnosis right. in the ER. You know, it's about treating people, keeping them alive, getting them out, back right. home to see a specialist. And I just remember looking at that doctor and going, what? And it was so confusing to him as well. He actually, the PA actually had his phone out and he was Googling it for me to show me more about it because he wasn't really even sure because it's just not that common, especially the thyroid eye disease. Um, And I just remember leaving the ER and getting in the car. I was traveling as well. So I was out of state for work. And I just remember getting in the car and thinking like, no, (laughs) He doesn't know what he's talking now about. Now, what happens? They they just send you home, say, all right, come back well, to the doctor. You know, we'll do a follow-up. Did they give you any kind of thyroid medication right there on the spot? Or I I was prescribed uh, something called methamazole, and that is to maintain your heart rate. So with hyperthyroidism and an overactive thyroid, um, it actually like significantly increases, increases your blood pressure and your heart rate. So I was prescribed something immediately right from the ER to to take care of that and um (laughs) i didn't even pick the prescription up (laughs) because i was like this is this is too much this is a lot at once you know i was inside of a week with these like major life changes i'm not taking that right i didn't even i didn't even go get it and then they were like you know schedule an appointment with an endocrinologist you'll probably need to see an ophthalmologist um so you know i did do all that when i got back home um and that's when the reality of the situation like really 
really settled in was when I got back home, I was able to able to see an endocrinologist. Um, and of course they ran more blood work and a more detailed blood panel that was, you know, more specific to the thyroid. Right. And it was, it was then that the news was delivered to me and that's when it kind of, that's when it kind of felt more real. Um, it, it still all feels surreal to me. It's, it's kind of like, I'm living in this parallel universe that is in fact my life and my current health state. <laughs> well, that that's the next question also, kind of what was your mental state going through this? I mean, you had this kind of, you've had some severe symptoms of that. I, I saw your Instagram and I was surprised that you were sharing those photos because they look pretty severe. Um, <laughs> I have a friend who had iro disease for the longest time. And yes, her eyes were pushed up. And it's just, I think, you know, she was my roommate and we had just grown so, you know, used to seeing her that way. But how did you feel seeing yourself that way? I'm still accepting the fact that I will never look like I did pre-TED um, oh, and post-multiple post, post surgeries. Um, I would say, and I'll be really honest, it's still so difficult for me to talk about this. Um, the biggest thing with your thyroid, um, obviously it's affecting hormones within your body and it just kind of makes you this like incredibly emotional person. And I don't want to say that I was never an emotional person, but I kind of knew when it was time to just be okay and push through. Right. And I, I can't do that anymore. It's like, uh -huh. it just overtakes you. And that's kind of part of my graves journey now. Um, but it's like the, the, <laughs> that's okay. it's kind of accepting who I am now is it really is, it is a learning process. It's a, it's a daily process. This, I always refer to it as a journey. Um, you know, the mental health state with Graves disease and with Ted I mean, you said yourself, you know, you you've kind of just accepted how your roommate looked. Um, it's a disfiguring disease. It affects not only your eyes, which is how we as humans connect on the deepest level with other humans, but your entire face and your facial structure. Um, so those changes happening to not only my eyes, but my entire face so rapidly in such a short period of time yeah. without any way to fix it or make it better with the snap of a finger right. or really even <laughs> with a few years wait it's t it's really terrifying and that was a major and still is a major mental health struggle for me um it's just pushing through all that and accepting that you know I've overcome a lot and this is the new me now and I know I get a lot of people say oh my gosh you look exactly the same you haven't changed and um you know, I think it's really easier on the outside looking in to say that, but I have changed and this is not only a new face physically, but a, a new me emotionally. You know, I, I get it. I get it. I do. Cause I've seen what she's gone through also. And I have to say though, you look, you don't look any different to me. and you're still Thank gorgeous, you. but I, I get the fact that it's your own body and it's your own like how you present yourself and just something that you the who you are and of course you being on camera uh, for your career I'm sure that part was a little devastating too because now it's not only affecting your health but now it's affecting your livelihood so what happened there did you have to take time off of work for that and and how did that work out not really knowing like what to expect with this journey or this path or, or both of these autoimmune diseases that are so similar and so related, but also managed so differently. Um, I was just like every day for me was a challenge, but also a hurdle that was overcome um, and like gaining more strength and momentum over each of those hurdles. So what were some of the symptoms? Let's talk about that. What were some of the symptoms first that you felt and what, I mean, you said the headache and the migraine, but what continued after that? Was there more? Initially with my diagnosis and then what some might call like a thyroid storm is essentially what I experienced, which was my thyroid was just 
inflamed and freaking out. Um, and then it shoots out all these, you know, these receptors and these hormones, and then, you know, the antibodies attack them. And then that's also what affects not only your thyroid, but your eyes. Um, so with thyroid eye disease, uh, these, uh, the, the fatty tissue and <clears throat> excuse me, muscles behind your eyes are affected and they become inflamed and swollen. And what that does is, you know, it creates no room for your eyes. So that's what creates that, that bulging, that proptosis type symptom with thyroid eye disease, because all that stuff going on behind your eyes, it's all swollen and there's no place for it to go. So your eyes end up just going out. Yeah. Um, with that, <laughs> came a whole slew of problems. Um, you know, with the eyes, once your eyes start to kind of breach out, you know, from your eyebrow area, which you don't really re realize, like eyebrows, okay, they're great. They frame your face. You need to fill them in a little bit. They look super cute, right? But it's actually like very purposeful. It's protecting your eye. And okay. once your eyes start to breach past that, they become exposed to everything. Um, the elements, the wind, the dirt, the sand, and most importantly, and most noticeable with Ted, I think across the board would be the light. Um, mm -hmm. That was probably one of the biggest challenges uh, with my my uh, my battle with Ted was just the light sensitivity. Um, because your eyes are so pushed out, every single light, like right now I have a light in front of me. Um, I can't even fathom a year ago having this, it, even in the room would have been unbearable. I mean, I was wearing mm -hmm. multiple pairs of sunglasses in the house. We had blankets and curtains drawn oh, and oh, wow. rings on the windows. Um, I couldn't go out like barely ever because you just never knew <laughs> what wow. type of environment you might be in and how bad the lighting might be. Um, I didn't realize that. I, I didn't even realize that. And I don't recall my girlfriend saying that, but she did have a severe problem and I, I'm surprised to hear those things. That's terrible. Yeah. It's it was that was the light sensitivity was difficult. And then of course the pain and the swelling and the irritation. I, I kind of say it's like having sandpaper or maybe even sand in your actual eye. So every blink was difficult. And with your eyes being pushed pushed forward, um mine moved uh in three months, my eyes moved from uh 12 millimeters to 15 millimeters forward. Um, so very, like very quick, they moved very quick wow. <laughs> and, uh, in that short period with that, all that swelling that's happening with the tissue and the muscles behind your eyes, there were two things that were a huge concern. One was my eye mobility. And then the second was my vision, uh, with the eye mobility, I had zero because wow. the eyes were so swollen. These glands were so swollen, the muscles and tissues, I couldn't move my eyes at all. Wow. So like, that was it. I had one vision. It was impossible and incredibly painful to do anything but that. So I wasn't able to drive for uh, five months. Wow. <laughs> it wasn't safe. Um, and then in addition to that, with the swelling, those muscles can actually push, push um, on like your, like, affect your vision. Um, they, they can push on your, your orbit and affect, um, sorry, on your eye and affect that vision. I am so grateful that throughout the entire process, my vision specifically was not affected. I didn't get that double or prismatic vision that a lot of TED people, TED patients do. Um, but even my ophthalmologist uh, was honestly shocked by that based on how bad, how bad my swelling was. Um, I was so, going to say also, I mean, did they say that your case was kind of rapid and in the way it developed because it yeah, sounds I, very quickly that it happened is that normal it, yeah uh, it's it's hard to say because you know being an autoimmune disease um and everybody's so different and how your body reacts to things is so different uh, mine was definitely very fast paced um you know i went from having absolutely no symptoms i was not symptomatic whatsoever to literally overnight and within 6 days in the er right. um the, the next biggest step for me was not even the eyes at first. It was overcoming the hyperthyroidism and getting that managed because with the overactive thyroid and in a hyperthyroid state, the biggest thing is your blood pressure and your heart rate. And I mean, I was upwards of 
130, 140 beats per minute, just sitting, wow. not moving. Oh my God. <laughs> Which I have to say was, I've always been a very like active, healthy, uh, healthy type of person. Um, that was really scary because <laughs> look, the idea of me as, as a healthy, active person, not being able to even get up and do anything for the fear of, you know, having a heart attack or ending right. up back in the emergency room is honestly terrifying. Uh, so the main goal, like right out of the gate with these diagnosis diagnoses was to manage the hyperthyroidism. And then once that was managed medically with changing dosages <laughs> multiple times, okay. that took about a month, month, month and a half, maybe to get under control. Okay. While that was going on, my eyes were just rapidly progressing. And then once we kind of dove into the hyperthyroid thing, got that situated, then focus could be shifted to to TED and what the what the outlook was for that. Um, with both of these diseases, especially with the thyroid eye disease, they call it an active phase. Um, and that active phase can be anywhere from a few months to five years. So it's just... You just don't know. You just don't now, know. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that, that how important your thyroid and the hormonal function of it is to all of your organs. I mean, your heart rate, like you're saying, that is an absolute symptom, um, you know, that can cause atrial fibrillation and things of that nature, um, you know, all of your organs. It, it's just one of the most important things in your body. I mean, we can control it, thank God. We can live without the thyroid, you know, thanks to modern medicine. So I wanted to speak about that next. I mean, this was something that also then you found out this was cancer. And now, yeah. I mean, this is kind of, you're already overwhelmed. And now this is the ultimate. What what happened there? Tell us about that today. So normally when you have an inflamed thyroid and, and one or all of, or any of the nodules you four in your thyroid are swollen, um, it sometimes can be referred to as a goiter. So I did have a nice neck goiter going and my neck was incredibly sensitive. Um, I was really protective of it. It was really strange how it was almost like this carnal instinct kind of kicked in where my body knew and, and mentally I knew something was wrong and I had to protect my neck. I don't know if it was just me and I don't know if there's anyone else out there that ever experienced that, but I'm talking to the point where I lived with my hand around or hands around my neck for weeks, wow. um, a, a scarf, a pillow, a blanket, anything. I couldn't have my neck exposed. I have no idea. Just why. something that you were feeling. Uh, my, like I, it, it had to be protected and I have absolutely no idea why. So I don't know if there's any other uh, Graves people or anyone else who's gone through any, uh, you know, thyroid disease or anything like that, that's ever felt that same way. But right. I, it, I had to be so protective of my neck. <laughs> it was such, it was actually such a relief once I had my thyroid out to just stop doing that. Um, but yeah, with, with a swollen thyroid, the normal, you know, path for a doctor um, would be to perform an ultrasound to see what's going on in there. Yeah. We already knew I had Graves' disease and it was very apparent that my thyroid was inflamed and overactive. Right. We never even got to that point. Um, I was diagnosed February 1st officially with uh, both of these uh, autoimmune diseases. And it was May, man, 25th, I think, uh, 26th, that when I had you my- decided to take a sonogram? Oh, wow. What's that? When they, it took that long for them to take the sonogram? No, I had a total thyroidectomy in May. Um, so just a few oh. months later, I just had it taken out. Oh. And then post-op pathology, they just right. test one of the nodules and that's when they detected um, a, a carcinoma, a oh. three millimeter carcinoma. And they only tested one of my nodules. Oh. Obviously further testing didn't matter thyroid is gone. That's yeah. a blessing in disguise. But that was a conversation that was never had um, before my surgery, uh, just because <laughs> of everything that was going on. And, you know, you hate to say that anything can take precedence over, you know, cancerous cells in your body. But at that point in time, it, it did, you know, the current state of my thyroid and my eyes took precedence over that. Sure. Um, so now the outlook with that, uh, luckily and thankfully, my last ultrasound um, was, again, 
cancer free. Um, so I'm very grateful for that. So that will be something that I will continue to monitor on a, you know, annual or semi-annual basis. Now with the thyroid removed, are you still, um, any kind of treatment that you're taking at this time? Oh, <sighs> Yeah. yeah. Um, I always refer to both of these diseases as a journey because okay. while again, they're so similar, they are so different and I am very much still in my journey phase. Um, <laughs> my dosage has been changed multiple times. So I do take synthetic thyroid hormone every day Okay. now, which I will, uh, for the rest of my life. Yes. Um, and my, my dosage has been all over the place. Uh, my blood panel, my most recent blood panel, which was only a few weeks ago, I have gone full spectrum. So my thyroid stimulating hormone, which was um, almost undetectable when I was hyperthyroid at the beginning of this journey, oh. um, has gone to the opposite end of that spectrum and is now too high. So we are constantly, I'm working together very closely with not only my endocrinologist, um, also my ophthalmologist, because he specializes specifically in treating patients with thyroid eye disease. Okay. Um, and so I'm working very closely with both of them to find this balance. Unfortunately, I have been struggling. Um, I've been struggling quite a bit the last uh, three, four weeks with this. Um, in okay. fact, my eyes are... Um, being very difficult. So I'm having a lot of uh, sensitivity with them, not light sensitivity all the time. So I'm grateful for that, okay. um, but just sensitive to everything else. Um, irritability, swelling, the upper eyelid edema. Uh, and then today uh, my heart rate is back up again, which is oh, okay. just fantastic. So I unfortunately will have to be as much as I love my doctor. Um, I will have to be, uh, I'll be calling him uh, later today to kind of, uh, to kind of break that down and go through that. And uh, right now I am, uh, I'm kind of going through, uh, a lot of the hyperthyroid symptoms again, which is so confusing as much research right. and reading and, uh, knowledge as I've gained throughout this whole journey, it, <laughs> it still just baffles me at times. So I'm feeling hyperthyroid. I'm, my metabolism is booming. I'm starving constantly. Um, mm -hmm. I'm losing my hair. Again, my hair is falling out. That's... If I brush it, it's just clumps. Oh, that is um, part of, of all the symptoms of it. it it's, it's, it's a long road. Listen, but thank God you're smiling. Thank God you're smiling. I mean, you know, it's you're taking like, it in stride. <laughs> what else can you do? It's just like, you know, you, you wake up one morning and, and, Every morning, the first thing I do, I mean, I was, oh, it was deep when like I was first diagnosed with all this. And, and like I said, I have always been, I have always been very confident in my own skin. I have always been a very strong person right. and I'm grateful for that. But like this, this disease broke me. It broke me. Um, it broke my mental health, my mental stamina. And uh, every morning, I would wake up and the first thing I did every morning um, was look in the mirror to see if my eyes had changed. And I thought I got a little break from that after, you know, thyroidectomy, two eye surgeries, um, multiple treatments, steroid infusions, all the things. And uh, here I am again, doing the same thing every morning, <laughs> right back at it. <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's, we're laughing and we're crying, but, it's, but you know, it, it's scary. <laughs> it's frightening. Um, especially when it's something that you really don't have control over. And we're trying now to, you know, play with certain treatments to get it right. And so it's, you know, you're kind of left in limbo and I, I get all those feelings that you're probably going through. I want to cry myself. Right now. <laughs> sorry, But it's like, <laughs> You know, <laughs> our health is so personal. It really is so personal. Obviously, it's, you know, it's, it's the most important thing. And to be the type of person and personality that you are, um, and I can see who you are, you know, even just through your tears here, how hard it is for you to accept it. You know, it's hard for you to accept that. And I get that. This, uh, this experience has put so many different things in perspective for me. And uh, one of the one of the, I guess you could say positive takeaways that I've had from this is it's just, it's really taught me to, to look at like other people in, in a very different way, because you never really know what that person is going through that day. 
100%. Sometimes people have health issues and it can be apparent externally, but a lot of times what they're fighting is internal. And so it's just kind of that like little touch of humility where I feel like I'm a little more sympathetic with other people now because it's just, you know, maybe you're having a bad day or maybe you got something else going on, but just that little extra. So, you know, that with <laughs> everything else that's happened. And I know you mentioned social media and, you know, me sharing my story as much as mm-hmm. possible. Um, you know, a, another huge, huge takeaway and goal for me throughout this process is to not only talk about my story and share my story, um, to spread awareness, yeah. but also to help others who are either going through this or will potentially be at this crossroads with these diseases at some point. Um, so I've been very vocal about sharing my story on my social platforms. Um, and even recently I actually started a thyroid eye disease support group. Um, we're specific to Michigan right now, but hopefully we'll grow. Uh, and the group is called uh, blink of an eye, um, okay. because your life changes in the blink of an eye. And that's what thyroid eye disease did for me. And, um, I started it with a uh, dear friend of mine who also has Ted and she was a tremendous, tremendous support system for me. Uh, when I was first diagnosed, my doctor passed on her cell phone, said, call her. She's wow. been through this. She was diagnosed 10, 12 years ago. She's there for you. Call her. Of course I didn't for like a month. <laughs> There's a pattern happening here. <laughs> but it's so hard to like not only admit that you have something wrong, but that you need help. You know, you're just like I was I was frozen. I was frozen with with everything. Um so when I finally reached out to her, we were able to connect and um she was just uh someone who listened and cared and had been through it. And um I would say that's a really difficult thing with this disease specifically. And although Ted does affect men, um, it more significantly affects women. Mm -hmm. And I think as women, um, there's a lot of emphasis put on our appearance, our features. So to have a disease that's hyper-focused in in the female category that (laughs) is disfiguring and debilitating, and it's rare, it's a rare disease. And not having a huge outlet or platform or support group or web page or, you know, organization to turn to for help, for answers, support, just someone to listen um, was terrifying. It was so difficult. So myself and and my partner, we, we want to be there for other people. Um, and we had our, our very first meeting uh, just a few days ago. Actually, it's been several months in the works. This is one of blink uh, of an eye. This is, where is this available? Is this the website or is this uh, Instagram? Uh, We have an Instagram page um, at Blink of an Eye Michigan. So MI, Blink of an Eye MI. Um, And we are kind of just sharing our story on that page now, um, both individually and our journey that we've got to experience together now as we call ourselves Ted Sisters. Um, But we are, we're trying to grow that sisterhood. Um, And we had a a few uh, other amazing, fantastic, beautiful women uh, join us at our inaugural uh, support group gathering. And uh, we came into that with literally almost no agenda. It was just a room um, full of uh, graves and thyroid eye disease warriors. Um, Someone even brought her, her mother with her, who's obviously a huge support system for her. Sure. We had a, a friend of mine uh, who's been a huge support system for me that was also there. Um, so we're, we basically just chatted about our journey the entire time. And, and I think that's most important is to share that journey. This is, this is how we learn. And yep. so this is how we learn. Was well, she obviously told you her journey. Did that help you feel better about your situation when you met her? Oh my gosh, uh, Latoya. Um, yes, when I first, when I finally, I finally called, when I finally called her, um, <laughs> finally, um, she was like, "Why did you wait so long?" <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, but yeah, just having someone, um, just knowing <laughs> that you were not alone was everything. It was everything. It, it wasn't just me, like someone else, 
someone else endured this and they made it and that meant I could make it too so having that person too <laughs> I'm like I'm such an ugly crier too so now you're beautiful don't worry about you <laughs> I'm, I'm not an actress because <laughs> daytime soaps not for me <laughs> uh, you know having that person to to talk to to um you know, not only share my experience with, but also, you know, she would, she would check in with me. Like she would touch base with me and see how I was doing and ask about my treatment. She even put my surgery dates in her calendar mm -hmm. so that she could check in with me about when I had my eye surgeries and when I had my thyroid removed. Um, and I know for her, although her journey has been much longer than mine, mm -hmm. I know for her that she had someone like that in her life when she first got into this journey as well. So when she was first diagnosed with Graves and Ted's, you know, she had her person. Um, so I know she's talked about how important that was for her. And so I think that opportunity to be that person for somebody else, um, it's not only is it rewarding, but it's just, it, it means, I think it really means a lot to this community. And the women, the women that we had attend our first meeting, I think I think that they will get that same experience as this group grows and progresses as that they will, they will get to feel that with other people as they share their story and they become more comfortable, you know, putting it out there and talking about it. And, um, we, we joked, <laughs> it, not really joked, but we kept it light. But, um, in the meeting, we talked about that first time where we have a meeting and, uh, someone who was just diagnosed with Graves and thyroid eye disease comes into the meeting. Like they just got their diagnosis two weeks ago and they're lost and terrified and confused. And they have this group like that yeah. is going to be, that's going to be awesome for everybody. Absolutely. It's, it is, it's a safety net and it's a, it's an education. And, and I think the most important thing we can do to get through any type of diagnosis or trauma or anything is to find that community of people who can guide you. I mean, some doctors, I mean, I hate to say this. I mean, <laughs> I'm speaking to a lot of doctors on like regular basis, but you know, again, there, there are people out there that's not their specialty. And so you might be going to a doctor who has no clue about the extent of thyroid disease and autoimmune disease and might misdiagnose you and and, you know, it can be something as simple as a blood test, just a comprehensive overall get that thyroid check, especially for women. Um, yeah. Even down to little things like when you're getting an x-ray at the dentist to make sure they cover your thyroid with the, you know, with the, the protection. And a yeah. lot of, I've, I've had to do this too, because I myself have hypothyroidism. Okay. And I discovered it. <laughs> yeah, just to just let you know, I, I discovered it at a very critical time in my life. We were trying to conceive a child and I had difficulty and we discovered that I had a hypothyroid and that was the issue. And so when I say it's so important just to get that test, it, I feel like it should be some kind of preventative blood <laughs> test for everyone. I mean, I, I, I joke with people, but I'm only kind of joking when they're saying, oh, I'm not feeling well. I've got something wrong. Like get your thyroid checked, exactly. <laughs> get in I, there, get those blood panels, get a check, <laughs> <laughs> get that thing checked, well, you know? And I think it, it can be easily mis misdiagnosed. Um, I mean, I've heard from other uh, Graves and Ted warriors that you know, have been in this for 15, 20 years that were misdiagnosed with they as being bipolar. Oh my God. Bribed lithium and took that for 10 years and it didn't do anything. It didn't help them. They just continued to suffer. And then, oops, mm -hmm. it was your thyroid the whole time. Like you just have a thyroid imbalance. You that's incredible. Things. That's, that's not even funny. That's not. No, it's, it's horrible. Like it's, yeah. it's it really is. It's horrible. And it's not in any way to, you know, to knock the the medical community or conventional medicine at all. It's just, it happens. It does happen. Um, and I think it, it needs to be medically, it needs to be a balance of, you know, having fantastic doctors that, uh, you know, run the proper tests and really listen to their patients, right. but also as a patient being accountable for 
what you're eating, the environment that you're in, what you're putting in your body, the toxins that are around you. Um, and also when you do go to the doctor, accepting the fact that not everyone is a perfect model of health, even myself. You know, I was, I, I'm a very active person. I eat pretty well, but I have my moments. I'm human. Um, and, you know, I am around uh, cars and motorcycles and at the racetrack often. So I'm exposed to different environments and a lot of toxins and environments. Those all affect how your health, your health is, how your body manages those things. So I think, you know, that's the balance. Um, that's the balance. Uh, I think also it's important to say, you know, to be an advocate for your own health. So if yeah. you're feeling something's off. Absolutely. And I, it, it's such a difficult thing with this this situation, you know, I didn't have any, I, I was asymptomatic. So I didn't have any major symptoms or signs leading up to this. I have one instance, one instance that happened maybe a month before my thyroid storm. So sorry. Um, one instance and I went to bed, I laid down and my, <laughs> my heart was racing. Okay. And I was like, this is so strange. Like I didn't even have a glass of wine. I wasn't very active before, you know what? I didn't, I didn't have caffeine. What is this? Right. And I mentioned it to my husband and he's like, okay, well, if that's still going on tomorrow, we should look into it. And then pff, that was it never again. And wow. then two, two, three weeks later, you know, and looking back on things now, like I have definitely, I have definitely been struggling hormonally with my thyroid for a long time in my life with things like weight and hormone changes, um, and my eyes in general, um, wow. just little things, but you know, it's like little things sometimes like don't, don't add up to be concerning medical issues. So it's hard. It's a hard thing for sure. But I, I'm almost glad that I was asymptomatic and that boom, it just, it happened. It was severe. We knew right away. I had no misdiagnosis. There was zero confusion or question from anyone medically that I had Graves and Ted. Right. Um, so there's definitely right. a part of me that's grateful for that. If there's anything that I'm grateful <laughs> for with these diagnoses, is is that I didn't I didn't struggle waiting to figure out what was wrong. Well, you know what? Let's talk about what's happening. That's great because you're back, right? So you're back. You're back on HGTV. <laughs> <laughs> Battle yeah. on the Mountain. I love this show. So. Yay! So again, this is this is you and other HGTV, you know, stars helping contestants renovate mountain lodges in Breckenridge, Colorado. That sounds beautiful. What a great, what a great gig. <laughs> show, I know, Breckenridge. Um, I had actually only been to Breckenridge in the winter and nice. um oh my gosh, Breckenridge in um in the summertime is just stunning like just stunning the scenic mountain views and all the like the flora and fauna i was just it was breathtaking uh, but that was a really fun opportunity that was actually my very first time back on camera and back to work in any capacity um post surgery so after how long were you out of work like would you say so that was my first my first gig back was battle on the mountain and that was mid-july so almost seven months, I was out of completely out of commission. Wow. Um, and looking back on that, we filmed in July and the episodes just aired um, uh, a couple weeks ago. Sure. Um, but looking back on that and seeing it now, um, my face was still, I was still so swollen and my eyes really? were still so swollen post-surgery. Um post uh, orbital decompression surgeries. Uh, I had to wear glasses. I couldn't wear makeup yet. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy looking back at that and seeing how far I, I really have come. Um, but it was such an exciting opportunity to be part of that. I mean, I had, I had a, a little part of it, um, which was at the time a lot for me coming back from where I was. So I was so grateful for my HGTV family being so incredibly understanding and compassionate through this, this whole health journey. Um, and, you know, I was able to be part of it and that was exciting. So uh, that was a fun show. And I just finished filming um, a new series uh, with HGTV um, just a couple weeks ago, too. So yeah, talk about it. More, more come, more to come. Um, 100 Day Hotel Challenge. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> I know. And I'll be honest, I have never renovated a hotel before. So this was 
So fun. This is like new territory. Yeah. And a hotel vibe and your home vibe. Those are just two very different things. Right. So I just, I love this like fun, funky style that we really brought into the spaces. Um, and it was just, it was completely different. Um, so we had two hotels, two separate teams and, uh, within each team, there were smaller teams and basically they were each divided in, w into different spaces within the hotel. Right. And so like that one space would compete against the other team for the same space. Uh, okay. So lobby versus lobby on, uh, on each team. I was just going to say the lobby, the lobby is, is, says it all in a hotel. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. I think the HGTV fans are really going to like this one. It is, it is a challenge show and it is very competitive. <laughs> in a good way, in a good way. It sounds like a lot of fun. I'm so glad to have you back into the HGTV family and to see you're doing well. You look beautiful and amazing. And I know you're going through your own journey right now, but you're coming out of it with five stars. So doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you again, just what advice can you give our audience or anyone who's feeling a little, you know, off maybe and just about hormone health? I mean, I would say talk to someone, um, whether it's a, a family member or a friend or a medical professional, um, really anybody, uh, just getting that second opinion um, can really help guide you in in a different direction, whether, you know, you're maybe having something really serious going on uh, or not, like I would say definitely lean on people. Um, I've always been such an independent person and these diseases have both taught me like it is okay to need other people. It's okay. I can still be my independent me, but we all need people. So talk to your doctor, talk to your friend, talk to your mother, talk to your family. Um, that, that would be really solid advice that I would give to anybody going through any sort of health journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Agree. hundred percent. Get that health and the advice you need. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. This was really a pleasure seeing you and, and hanging out with you today and having this conversation. It's so important for women to have, especially. Thank you so much for listening. It, it really does mean a lot to me. Well, thank you for coming on. It was great speaking with you today. You too. Thank Bye. you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to our channel. Click that button up there and be sure to visit www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today for more inspiring stories like what you heard today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, be safe, live in gratitude and keep health first.